There you go. Oh, look at those fingers. Oh, Jack, you know you're getting to be a real pro. Oh, girl. you're too kind. I'm still so afraid I'm going to drop this little bundle of chalk. Oh, no, you're not going to drop it. I mean, he's just, he's just, he's so little. I'm so big, and he scares me. <laughs> well, is that an attitude to have for a godfather? Well, no, I mean, I imagine a godfather would... What do you mean? Tom and I would very much like you to be Jamie's godfather. Good morning. Are you ready for some rides, Tom? Oh, I think I got some real wing wing CW books, magazines. What are you doing here? Can I see the sweet little stop. thing? You stop. You don't come any closer. What? You stay away from my baby. No, no, that can't be. Arlene was always hot to go out with anyone anytime. You're thinking about somebody else, Adam. No, no, I'm not. Yeah, you are. I'm telling you, there were only two men she would even look at. You and Harry Vaughn. Well, she married him. Only because she couldn't have you. Oh, come on. Don't be ridiculous. You know, I, I always knew you were obsessed with your business, but did everything go right over your head? Arlene had it bad for you, a terminal case. Nonsense, it was just a fling. She didn't think so. We had fun, and then it ended, and then she married Harry. On the rebound from you. It was, it was pretty sad, actually. In fact... What? When that little darling girl of hers was born, what, five and a half, six months after she married Harry, well... Well, what? Let me put it like this. When that rag sheet came out, with that story about you last winter, you know, about Haley Vaughn being your daughter? I figured it was true. So you're bailing out? I'm not helping you. We got that right. For your sake and for mine, I've got to back out of this. You don't care. You, you just think we're not worth bothering with. Oh, yes, I all. do care. I care very much. But I can't go on telling you what to do and, or how to do it. I can't come to your rescue every time there's trouble. You've got to live your own life and make your own choices and decisions. Uncle Trevor, I need help. Help. Help that keeps Arlene drunk. It's not good. I'm through with it. You're on your own. And you're with him on this? Well, Trevor's right. You have to live your own life. Brian, are, are you against me, too? Brian. Too many screwed up people in here. You know, no, don't go, Trevor. He has to do it on his own, too. you be there for me. And I will be. Well then, well then, stand up with me against them. You said you loved me. I do love you. That's why I'm doing this. Look, we'll run away together, just like you wanted, just like you said. We'll, we'll go someplace where they can never find us. It, it, it's the perfect plan. Come on, don't you see? We'll, Everything will work out just the way you said. I won't go to prison. My mom will be safe. Everything will, everything will be okay. Please, Brian, it was your idea, remember? We just have to decide to do it. We have to do it. Come on. Brian, you said you loved me. Don't turn your back on me now. You know how much you mean to me, right? Yes. Yes. When can we leave? Come on, let's just go now. No, no, Come on. no, no, no. I'm not going to run away with you. What? Well, it was your idea yeah. to start with. I know, but it was dumb. It, it, it was a lousy idea. No, it was a wonderful idea. No. It, it can work. No. Yes. It, we can make it work. No, we can't. You can't do it, all right? It wouldn't work. It can. It will. You, you, you'd be just messing up your life. You'd... You can't solve problems by running away from them. 
I mean, your uncle's right, Haley. You gotta get control of your life. You're with them. Look, Haley, if you don't... If you don't try to save your own neck right now, no matter what it does to your mother, then we're through. Broken. I'm sorry, but I'm out of it. I hope you make the right choice, Haley. I mean, I am just so sorry if I have upset you. I mean, as the good Lord is my witness, and, and you got to believe me here, I would never, I would never do anything to, to harm your little baby boy. Jack, could you leave us alone for a few minutes? Brooke, I don't want to see you under any extra pressure. Please, I just want to speak to Opal. All right. I want to be up front about this. Uh, this Tom what? Tom told me what happened with you and Dixie the night that Jamie was born. Oh, well. He that's also right. told you then that there is no connection between you and this baby. That's right. And, and I, I want to make it very clear, Opal, that I will not allow you to interfere in my life or to make trouble for my child. But and Brooke, if you try to do it, you will regret it. Now, 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 Brooke, honey, I think that you're just getting yourself all twisted up into a knot for absolutely no reason. The only reason I came in here was just as part of my official duties. Your duties? Yeah, my job. It's wheeling around these books and magazines, tapes, what have you, for the patients, you know, offering them some kind of relief from their tedium and horrendous suffering. You work here? Yeah, I do, as of this morning. Well, I'm only a volunteer, of course, but I'm telling you, I am getting as much out of this as the patients are, you know, seeing all these folks with all their pain and their aches and everything. I mean, it's really uh, keeping my mind off of my troubles, I can tell you that right now. I'm just here to, you know, spread a little sunshine, that's all. And that's why I came in here, was to offer you books, magazines, what have you. That is the honest truth. But you wanted to see the baby. Well, I don't mind seeing a newborn infant, no, but it's not why I came in here, really. I mean, they are just about the best thing in the whole wide world, don't you agree? And that one, I mean, look at him, he is a, he's a real gem no doubt about that, but, but really, really. Brooke, I did not come in here to, um, in any way suggest that he's Tad's baby. Oh, no, good heavens, I mean, you have been through enough as it is, you know. You don't need anything like that, and besides which, I'm really too old, to, too, too young, I mean, to be a grandmother, don't you think? Oh, so cute. But... I would know, I know much more, I know better than to ever, ever try to stir up things about, about that time, Brooke, between you and Ted. And Dixie knows that as well, you know. Honest to Pete. Do you really mean that? I sure as heck do. Well, I'm sorry, Opal. I, I didn't mean to get carried away. I didn't mean to snap at you. Oh. Honey, don't you worry about it for one little second. I appreciate your being up front about everything. I really do. And now I'm just going to leave you alone with your little tag, all right? You take care of yourself and you take care of him. I am out of here now and you have a good day, okay? Well, what? Well, it looked to me like I might have to represent you in a murder case. <laughs> Jack, she came in here, she wasn't even wearing a surgical gown. I mean... And that's all there was to it. 
Yes, that's all there was to it. Just the lioness protecting her cub from the unsafe. Look, I have every right to be protective about this baby. This baby had a lot of trouble getting into this world. And you don't have to worry about it, all right? I smoothed it all out. And that's all there was to it? Yes, that's all. Okay, Brooke, whatever you say. Would be so proud of you. Yeah, Ted dragged me pretty good. Yeah, for giving up, that's for sure. Yeah, well, he knew you could do it. Ted had a way of saying things, telling people what they needed to hear, you know? Yeah. He was real good with that. Well, now that I'm back in form, and what a rare form it is, but oh. I think I'm going to have a spectacular life. Oh, and here's... Well, the spectacular thing's coming my way here. Hi, Angie. Nice to see this you. This is a surprise. It's a gorgeous day. Happen to have some free time, unexpectedly. So, I, um... Decided to take a walk. Decided to come and look you up. Harder job than I anticipated. Been tracking you all over town. I was having lunch with uh, Dixie. Oh, 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 Derek! I just forgot I've got an appointment with um with the Mrs. Lake. She's my best customer, you know. I can't miss seeing her. Oh, Derek, would you, would, would you mind terribly if we just did lunch another day? No, oh, sure, that that's fine. Oh, good. I'm glad. Listen, I'm I've got to run, but listen, I'll I'll see you later. It's really nice to see you, Angie. Yeah, you too, Bye -bye. Dixie. That was fast. Yeah, not too subtle. But very thoughtful. Mm-hmm. Very. So, um, why is it you decided you would look me up on such a beautiful afternoon? I have something very important to say to you. And what could that be? I talked with Cal. You did? Yes, I did. And? And I told him I didn't think we had a future together. You and Cal? Mm-hmm. I said that I had some very strong feelings for you. Strong feelings? I've decided to take you up on your proposal. Do you mean... The answer's yes. Oh, Angie, I do love you. to me or anything. I mean, I'm not square, but I don't make a habit of going to hotels or anything, you know. I... No, you're not that kind of girl. That's what, that's what makes you so special. Really? Yes, and so desirable. Oh, and, and, and I'm so glad to hear you say that, because that's the way that I feel about you, Adam. How do you feel about me? Don't you know? Adam, you're the only Man, I've been looking for a man like you all my life. You're the only man I care about, now and forever. What a nice thing to say. I mean it. I mean it. You are the only man in my life. I'm so flattered. <laughs> you mean it? I do mean it, though. I really do mean it. <laughs> do you mean it? <laughs> oh. oh, can't you tell? <laughs> I love you so much, Adam. And when we're married, we're, we're going to have the most beautiful house and a big front porch. And we're going to have kids and beautiful children. They're going to be beautiful just like you and me. Perfect, mm. perfect. <laughs> you are taking the pill, aren't you? Um, I, <laughs> I don't like talking about, about those things. Well, it's kind of embarrassing, I, you know. I mean, I think the less said, the better. Yeah, well, it sort of I, spoils the moment. 
Yeah. Are you or aren't you? I am. Of course I am. This is 1973, for heaven's sake. Well, good. <laughs> I know how to handle those good. things. But I, I really think that maybe we should talk just a little more. No, 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 no more talking. No more I think if you were going to side with Arlene, we'd know by now, surely. I think this is a good sign. Definitely, maybe. It's gotta be. Hello? Hello. I was wondering if I might talk with Arlene Vaughn. She's there, isn't she? It's debatable. Um, hang on a minute. Arlene? Arlene, the phone's for you. Yeah, hello. Hello, Arlene. It's Mars. What do you want? Nice attitude, Arlene. But I don't care, I just had to call. Why? Because I sent Adam Chandler down memory lane, circa 73. Yeah? And believe me, I refreshed his memory, but good. You know, how you adored him, didn't even see any other man but him? Hey, Tinkerbell. What's it gonna be? The only thing it can be. Which is? Go to hell. All of you. Come on, this is stupid. No, Brian, it's her decision. Let her go. Great. Because that's exactly what I wanted. You guys are so pathetic. I'd have to be brain dead to listen to any one of you. You, I don't even know, and you're butting into my life. That makes you a total fool. But nothing compared to these morons who said they love me. You, you love yourself, period. No, no, I take that back. You love money, clothes, jewelry, anything you can buy, people, too. And you, you're a total jerk. You don't know squat about the real world. All you know about is your stupid self-help support groups and your queer little meetings where everyone sits around and whines to each other about how they're going to solve your problems. Well, I don't need to hear any more whining from you. And you, you say you love me, you care about me. You couldn't care less. You promised me a nice, safe home and you throw me in jail. You don't love me. You don't love my mom. Next thing you know, you'll be putting Natalie in jail. She doesn't do exactly what you say, but I don't, I don't care who you love, because mom and me, we're a family. We have each other. We love each other. Damn straight we do. Come on, baby. We don't need these people. Come on. Where are we going? I don't need you all to save my kid. I can do it just fine on my own. Oh. <laughs> all right, you little linebacker, dream of all those yards run, will you? He's running already. <laughs> Listen, Brooke, uh, about that offer. Which I hope you don't refuse. Uh, I'd love to, but it seems to me I recall a rather good-natured cop had a bid in before me, huh? Oh, Jack, Trevor's a wonderful person. And we love him very much. But it's just all the things that you've done for Tom and me these last few days, we both just felt it should be you. Thank you, Anna. Oh, well, good. You know, I also remember uh, I was supposed to uh, perform in another official capacity, too, you know. What was that? Well, I was supposed to be best manager wedding. 
Well, I think the wedding's going to have to wait for a, a little while. Oh? Well, Tom and I both think, obviously, I should be recovered before. Yes. Well, lucky you. You're a lawyer. You should also be a Boy Scout. I've come prepared. What is that? This is that declaration of paternity that I was telling you and Tom about. Now, all you have to do is you and Tom have to sign this, and it declares him the official father and legal father of young Jamie. Well, Tom and I both know who Jamie's father is. I know that, dear, but this just protects everybody's rights. Yours, Jamie's, Tom's. Look, Brooke, I'm not suggesting this to you just as your lawyer. I'm suggesting it to you as your friend and, and as Jamie's potential godfather. You really think this is necessary? I really think this thing should be wrapped up, yes. Yeah. All right, let me look at them. Sort of right on, honey. There's a pen. Brooke, is there, uh, is there something wrong? Is there some problem that I should know about? No. No, no, of course not. So you had a good first day, huh? Oh, yeah, just peachy. Well, except for one little thing. What's that? Well, I had a bad misunderstanding with Brooke. It only lasted a minute, but, ooh, it was a nasty one. What happened? Well, you know, I was just tooling into her room with my cart of many delights, and she kind of flipped out. Stay away from my baby. She screamed like I was getting ready to snatch the little darling. Now, why do you suppose she would react like that? Nerves, maybe hormones. Maybe she figures me for a troublemaker. I don't know. But I made sure that it all got straightened out. I was sure that she understood that we are making no claims on her baby, that we've dropped all notion of his, him being Tad's. Except I haven't dropped it. Say what? Opal Cortland, please dial the operator. <coughs> Opal Cortland, please dial the operator. Why, well, how do you like them apples? My first day on the job, I'm already getting paged. Well, this must make me official. Excuse me. Um, Opal Cortland here. Oh, all right. Uh-huh. Uh, hello? Hello, Opal. Daisy? Yes. Daisy, is that you? Where are you? Well, I'm in Paris. I just, um, called to see how you are. How is everything, Opal? I feel rotten. You all did what was right. Thanks for, uh, helping, Tom. We couldn't have done it without you. None of us can do it alone. Yeah. You call me if you need me. I'll do what I can. Thanks. Hi. Hello, everybody. Not everybody. Where's Haley? Uh, she's gone off with her mom. Gone off? Didn't she know I was coming over here? I have to go over some things with her before the session. Well, what can I say? Afternoon. She knew, her mom knew. It's a mess. Well, it sure doesn't help things. At least I can go over some things with you. Well, what can we do to help? I'm allowed to call character witnesses this afternoon. Oh, why? Now, what good is it going to do? I mean, she's already playing guilty, right? Yes, but if the judge hears some very strong statements of support from people who are very close to Haley, I might have a good shot at getting her sentence reduced. We can't help. What? She's on her own. We're not testifying on her behalf. If the judge doesn't hear something positive about Haley, he's going to throw the book at her. Sorry, no can do. Natalie? Brian? Sorry, we're not even going to the hearing. Have you all gone crazy? Do you know what's at stake here? Yeah, we know. Well, you're Haley's only chance to maybe stay out of prison. We know that. Well, if you don't say something good for her, her chances go to zero. No way do I want to see Chandler. No way do I want to see I'm that. I'm going sure. to see Adam. No, Mom, it'll only make things worse. I'm going to see him, and that's all there is to Mom, it. Mom, come on, this won't help Be anything. Be quiet. I know what I'm doing. Mom, come on, let's just go. Let's just no. get out of here. Be quiet now. Oh, don't be surprised to see me, Adam. I am, actually, yes, I am. I know you talked to Marge. 
And I know you know I'm telling you the truth about my daughter, Ar don't you? Arlene, what I... What truth? Go ahead. What is this? Tell her, Adam. Tell her the truth. Tell her that you're backing off on this prosecution, and you tell her why. What are you raving about? The truth, Adam. I don't know what you're talking about. And there's no way I'm gonna, I'm gonna back off on this prosecution. What? I'm not letting this juvenile delinquent off the hook. Forget it. No, 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 no. You can't mean that. You can't. Go home, Arlene. Go home. No, no, no. Not, not after what Marge told you. Now, you must believe me. Now, how can you not believe me? Believe what? Go home and sleep it off, Arlene. What is she talking about? What about She's, the truth? Your mother is drunk. Can't you see that? She doesn't know what she's saying. It's nonsense. It's gibberish. It is not nonsense, and I am not drunk. Boy, you don't even have a heart in there, do you? Huh? How can you be so cold? Man, you are wretched. We beat it, both of you. Get out. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. You don't talk to my mother that way. You don't hurt her. Take your lush of a mother and scram, okay? I won't forget this. I'll get you. I'll get even with you if it's the last thing I do. You don't hurt my mother. Come on, Mom. How can you be so cruel? Mom, subhumans don't have any feelings. Who, Forget them. Who does she sound like to you, Come Adam? Come on, Mom. Come on, get out. Can't you see it? Can't you feel it? Get out! Just like that, you dump her. We're not dumping her. We stopped enabling her. Oh, please. Whatever you call it. You're dropping her in the shark tank. You can see her go to jail, doing time for something she didn't even do, when even one of you says something kind to her in the courtroom. I'm losing my mind. It's very simple. Haley can and should get herself out of this problem. All she has to do is go to court, testify, tell the truth, and it's over. Oh, and if she doesn't? If she doesn't, she lives with the consequences of her choice. Maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe we could just say a few words no. for her. Now, we fold on this, the game is over. Game? This is Haley's life. That's right. And we can't help her until she helps herself. She is 16. She's a child. Do any of you even care about her at we all? We love her. That's why we're doing this. It's the last chance she has to save herself. Nothing I can do will make you change your mind. Well, at least come to the hearing. I can't. I'd lose it. Oh, you mean you try to save her? No, I'd try to enable her. Ugh. And I can't do that. I can't go. I don't like this. I don't approve of it, and I sure as hell don't like you hiring me to defend her and then sabotaging my effort. That's not what we're doing here. Livia, would you like to withdraw from the case? Oh, yeah, that would really help the kid. No, I'm in this to win it for, and I'm going to do my best. She sure deserves a break. And it looks like I'm the only one around here who's going to give it to her. <laughs> I can't wait to tell Livia. Wait, is she going to approve this? Are you kidding me? Of course she's going to approve. <laughs> and besides which, she has to pay up. What? She bet me a long time ago that I would never get married. Mm-hmm. Now I see this is all very clear. You proposed just so you could win your bet. Hey, baby, what can I say? Time's all. I need oh, the money. Oh, you're awful. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's why you love me. You love me. Oh, I can't believe this. And you said yes. I can't believe you said yes. Yes, that's what I said. I love you. Likewise. Are you sure? I mean, are you really sure? What is this? Are you you trying to back out on me now? Is that what it is? No, this cushy job in San Francisco. Are you sure you really don't need it? Who needs to be a well-paid hotshot at a glamorous hospital in a beautiful city? Hmm? And me being a cop, you can deal with that, right? Because you know I'm going to be right back on the street come next week. I know. I didn't think otherwise. I can't believe this. Look, I don't need to be a well-paid hotshot at a glamorous hospital in a beautiful city. I know that you're a cop. It's a part of what you are. I could never ask you to be anything else. 
I love you for what you are. All that you are. I just love you. <laughs> special year of first steps for Look, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. Just, just a slip of the tongue. A Freudian just, slip? No, of course not. It's okay. It's okay. I know how much you love Jesse. Yes, but he's dead now. Yeah, but the love isn't. Look, I'm over Jesse. All right? It wasn't easy. It took some time, granted. But I've let him go, Derek. Maybe. Maybe not. What are you saying? Hmm? That a love as deep as the love that you and Jesse shared may not be so easy to get over. Well, then why did I fall in love with you then? Huh? Why did I agree to marry you if I weren't over Jesse? Maybe that's the point. Maybe that's why you did those things. Come again? Look, Jesse and I are a lot alike. Now, I know that we can't have the same thing that you and Jesse had. I know that. But we do have a lot of things in common. Now, you just listen to me, Angie. Please. Because I thought the world of Jesse. You know that. I even, tried to, I even tried to live my life like his. I modeled my whole life after him. And maybe I modeled too well. Maybe you said yes to me because it was just like saying yes to Jesse oh, all over again. Oh, this is absolutely again. ludicrous. I know who you are. I didn't fall in love with you because you were a carbon copy of Jesse, okay, Derek. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. But you do me one favor then, okay? Yes, sir. You think about what I said to you. You just give it a thought and see what comes up. Mm -hmm. Because I want you to be absolutely sure, Angie. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, well, so that's the whole tawdry tale, Daisy. And no matter what I said or did, he would not believe me. Me, the woman that he swore he loved. Oh, well, it was just the worst thing a husband could do to a wife. It is awful. I'm so sorry, Opal. Yeah, well, me too. You know, here I thought I was headed for this wonderful life, just full of all happiness and good things, and just turned out to be an honest-to-goodness nightmare. Boy, this was the kind that I just can't wake up from either. I mean, Palmer was just the meanest. Well, I know how he can be, believe me. I'm so sorry it had to happen. Yeah. Well, now I really understand what you went through. Mm. He can be so sweet, you know, so wonderful. And then you turn around, he's just as cold as ice, just as cuts you dead, turns your dreams to horse manure. Oh, he's a monster. He's just a low-down, rattlesnake-hearted monster. Opal, is that the way you really feel about him? Oh, you bet your life I do. I can't bear the thought of him, much less the sight of him. Well, yes, I can hear he's made you very angry, and I don't blame you for being upset, of course, but I just... I don't know. I just still detect that you have some feeling for him. Oh, sure, I do. Loathing and despisement. And love? Wash your mouth out with soap, Daisy Cortland. I bet you he loves you, too. Oh, yeah, sure, the snake still squeaks that he does. Oh, Opal. Oh, he's just a beady-eyed, pea-brained rodent. That's the only way I can think of him. I thought you just said you <clears throat> uh, don't think of him at all. Well, all right, all right. So I do still think of him, but only in terms of all of the agony he caused me. Boy, oh boy, I just can't get him out of my mind. Boy, your heart. <sighs> Would you just stop that, please? Now, I have booted him out of my life, and that's where he's going to stay if i got to work 24 hours a day to keep it that way. I am going to forget that he ever existed. 
Well, uh, I, I don't blame you. Um, I can see that he's made you very angry, and I don't blame you for being upset, but if you still have feelings for him at all, well, don't you think you ought to work on it? He's never going to change his twisted stripes. He didn't trust me, Daisy, you know, way down deep where it really matters. He didn't trust me, he still doesn't, and he never will. So that's just it. Sayonara. It's finito. Adios, uh, well, uh, well, it's just, it's so sad. Yeah, well, I know it's sad. Same with the. So, well, let's not talk about that anymore. Tell me what's happening with you. Oh, me? Uh, well, you know, I'm in Paris, and I go to the galleries, and I, um... Go to Capri on the weekends and... Oh, Opal! I just looked at the time. I'm terribly late. I've got to go. You take care of yourself now. Bye. Bye. Well, Dixie, that... He's a darling. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, he's absolutely precious. What a darling little boy. I have to be going. Oh, yeah, you, you go ahead. Okay, thanks. Sure. What the sand hill do you think you are doing? I'm just looking. That is not. Tad's baby. I am absolutely sure about it, and you better get absolutely sure, too, and double quick. I can't. Dixie! I can't help it. He looks like him. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. Dixie, all newborns look like Winston Churchill, and that little kid is no exception. He has his eyes, and his nose, the shape of his head. No, honey, no. It's just because you want it to be, but there is no real resemblance. There is. No, you're just seeing what you want to see. And it's not a good idea for you to keep on with this like this. You know, you're just setting yourself up for a heartbreak. And you're not making it any easier on Brooke either. Now, that is not Tad's baby. You know, he'd be ashamed of you carrying on like this. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. I'm carrying on. I, uh, I'm just... I'm just seeing what I want to see. That's right. That's right. Now let's vamoose out of here, okay? You should have seen Jamie just now, Tom. He was so cute. Yeah. <laughs> I'm absolutely sure now he has your ears. Oh, no. No doubt about it. Really, I think he's going to be as strong and handsome as, as his daddy. Yeah, he's going to be just as smart as his mom. I'm not sure I'm going to let him play football. I mean, you well, know, he's such a handsome young man. We'll talk about that. Yeah, I'd say you have a few years to decide about <laughs> that, huh? Okay, this takes care of it. All finished. Okay, thanks, Jack. You bet. See you guys later. Okay. All right, take care. Brooke English? I'm Livia Fry. I I'm sorry to disturb you, but it's really urgent. It's about Haley Vaughn. I need your help. So, why are we out here, Haley? Uh well, I wanted to get you to explain to me what went on back there. Nothing. I tried to get Chandler to be a human being, and I failed. Uh, no. Uh-uh. There was a lot more to it than that. And, and what about this truth thing that you wanted him to tell me about? What was that all about? Nothing. Mom, please, don't blow me off here. Something heavy was going on between you two. What was it? It was nothing, I told you. Okay? Mom, talk to me. My life's on the line here. I have trouble everywhere I look, and you're not helping. I do want to help, baby. I do want to help you. Fine. Good. Then explain to me what's going on. I have a right to know. Hi, Teresa. Oh, hi. Do you see all this Revere wear that's on sale? Yeah. I'm getting this seven-piece set for my... I'm so sorry. I know it hurts, but you had to do it. You did do the right thing. Well, how come I feel so lousy? I love Arlene. And the kid, I, I feel like she's... I love Haley, too. I know. She does, too. I 
think? She thinks I hate her. No. No, she doesn't. No, she doesn't. What's going to happen to them? Well, if her own family won't testify or her case evaporates, any chance she has goes up in smoke. Really? Really. Yeah, it seems very likely to me. Well, it may seem cold-hearted, but I think Trevor's doing everything he can do to get Haley to wake up. Yeah, but to do it now when it practically guarantees that Haley would go to jail? Well, we don't know that, but still, that's the way it's got to be, yeah. But that's outrageous. I mean, she can't go to jail. And if Adam has his way, he won't let the prosecutor stop until the judge puts her there. And I'm afraid you're right on that one. Well, I'm not going to let that happen. He's not going to. He's not going to get away with it. Would, would my testimony help on her behalf? It would be wonderful. I'll arrange for an affidavit. Well, listen, I, I don't know Haley that well, but I'd be happy to say something in her behalf if it would help. It'd be great. Thank you. If Harry were here, then we could figure out a way out of this. Oh, I loved him so much. I... If Daddy were here, none of this would have ever happened. Yeah, but we are here, aren't we? I miss him. Me too. All the time. I know, I know. Baby, you adored your daddy, didn't you? Huh? And you did... You did too, didn't you, Mom? You love daddy more than Adam Chandler, right? Listen, baby. I loved your father more than anything. He was the only man for me. The only, only man. Daddy was the best. I wish he were here. He would take care of us. More than anything, I wish Daddy were here. Hamilton, I've got to talk to you. I'm busy. Please, you have to talk to me. I've had about enough of this, Chandler. I'm backing off on everything I said about Haley Vaughan. I was wrong about her. What? I want all the charges against her dropped, immediately. For fun around here, me and the boys like to do something a little bit crazy. Put two kinds of cheese on the cheeseburger! For a wild new taste, head to the store for two kinds of cheese and lean ground beef. Cheddar! This is Walter Cryan. Retrace the steps that led up to a rape accusation at the Kennedy compound. Tom McGear reports from Palm Beach tonight at 6.